Wednesday night about the way things are and everything. You know, we celebrated our independence. In uh, a free republic, you have two cows. You sell one and buy a bull. In socialism, you have two cows. You are forced to give one to your neighbor. In communism, you have two cows, which you are forced to give to the government, which in turn gives you back, <laughs> gives you back some of the milk. In fascism, you have two cows whose milk you give to the government, which in turn sells it back to you. In Nazism, you have two cows. The government shoots you and takes the cows. In Obama's New Deal, you have two cows. The government shoots one, milks the other, pours the milk down the drain, and feeds you a whole lot of bull. <laughs> Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read one verse. Verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm going to preach on this this morning. Everything is new when you get saved. Everything is new when you get saved. <clears throat> to prove to you what the modern versions do to your Bible... I can understand how a, I told Debbie last night, I can understand how a, a preacher can have a little, just a little bit of education and not understand what the modern versions do to the Bible. All you got to do is just compare it, just read it just a little bit. All you got to do is just compare two or three verses, then you take the modern versions and throw them in the trash can. Amen. That's all you got to do. If I read a modern version Bible and it took the virgin birth out one time, I'd throw it in the trash. One verse is all it would take. And I'm done. But I got to looking at this. In this verse, the NIV says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Now that changes the whole meaning. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Creation and creature is two different things. Y'all understand that? That piano is a creation. It's not a creature. You are a creature. You're a living, breathing, functional organism. That is not. That is made out of a piece of wood. You understand what they're doing to you? The New King James says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Same thing. New Life Version says, For if a man belongs to Christ, he is a new person. The old life is gone. New life has begun. Changes it again. The New New Living Translation says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. What means that anyone who belongs to Christ? It took out the part where it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. It took that part out. It said, it said this means that anyone... It, it just changes everything. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone anew, has begun. New Revised Standard Version. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new, there is a new creation. Takes out creature. Every single one of them takes that out. The voice. This was before it came a TV show. Therefore, if anyone is, is united with the anointed one, takes out Christ, that person is a new creation. Now, you notice every single modern version Bible takes out creature. You are a creature. You say, oh, that sounds awful. I'm not a creature. Of course you are. Me and you both, we're a creature. We're living, breathing, organism. We're creatures. That is a creation. This is a creation. That carpet's a creation. The light's a creation. But we are a creation, but we're also a creature. You follow me? We're a living, breathing, uh, operating cre creature. And when you become, when you are in Christ, when you get saved, you are a new creature. You're not just a new creation. That could mean the modern versions could mean when you get saved, you become a fan or a water bottle or an offering plate. That could mean anything. But when you become, when you become a uh, when you, be, you, know, you get born again, according to the real Bible, the King James Bible, you become a new creature. You are born again. The Bible said, Jesus said, that you must be born again. That's why it's called the new birth. 
You're born wrong the first time. You come into this world in sin. You're born wrong. You're born in sin. And so you have to be reborn. That's why it's called the new birth. You have to get saved. You have to get saved. You've got to get born again. You've got to get born into the family of God. That's why it's called in Christ. Because you're born in Adam. You're born in sin. Everybody's not God's children. Everybody in the world's not God's children. Everybody's God's creation. Everybody's not God's children until they get saved. Everybody's Adam's children. Uh, once you get saved, you are in Christ. And then you become the, the seed of, of, of Jesus Christ. Then we're now, uh, we're Adam's seed. And when we get saved, we become the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're born of God, of the in Christ. Incorruptible uh, seed of the incorruptible word of God. Brother, listen, once we become saved, we're a new creature. And brother and sister, we become a new creature. And the Bible said, Oh, things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? When you get saved, listen, according to the Bible, when a man or a woman gets saved, he is a new creature. She is a new creature. Listen, brother, I believe according to the Bible, when a man gets saved or a woman gets saved, everything about them changes. Everything's new when you get saved. People get saved and make a profession of faith and they, and they keep doing what they always did and going where they always went. Something didn't happen. I was going to have Brother Shannon bring his little boy up here, but I see he's asleep, and I don't want to disturb him. But I was going to have him bring him up here and let everybody look at him. Man, that kid's growing. I don't know what they're feeding him. I think they're giving him miracle growing his bottle. But anyway, he is a brand new baby. Oh, don't wake him up, brother. Oh, listen. I, I want you to look at this. I'm going to use him for illustration. Lord have mercy. What a pretty young he is. Look at him. I don't know. Bless his heart. Now listen, I use for illustration. Look at that. Look at that child. Got more hair than I do. Amen. Now this represents the look at him, look at me. What am I doing up here? This represents a new babe in Christ. The little Jack here. Now he does not have, if you look at his birth certificate, he don't have a past. He don't have a uh, he don't have a uh, criminal history. You know why he don't have a criminal history? Because he's brand new. You know why he don't have an employment history? Because he's brand new. You know why he don't have a credit score? He ain't never bought nothing. You know why he don't? You know why? You know why he ain't never broke up with a girl? He's lucky. He ain't never dated one. He's brand new. It's you know why? You know why he ain't never? He ain't got a report card. He ain't never went to school. He ain't never been nowhere. You know why he ain't got, got a driver's license? He ain't never went uh, 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 driver's training and got a driver's license. He ain't never drove a car. Everything about him is brand new. And why that is is because he's brand new. He's just born. He just came into the world. And that's the way Christian people are. When a man is in Christ, everything about him is brand new. And that's the way he is. Look at him brand new toes and feet. That's the way you are when you're saved. Brand new feet, brand new hands, brand new head, brand new hair, brand new eyes. Look at him. He's like, I like that, preacher. Man. Praise God. Thank you, brother. That's good preaching, brother Jack. He looked at me and just grinned real big. He's liking my preaching better than y'all are. But listen, brother, everything is new when you get saved. When that baby comes into the world, he has no past. And that's the wonderful thing about when you get saved. All your past is behind you. Listen, you don't have to live and worry about all that stuff you've done and all those places you've been and all that worrisome past, all that bad stuff. Preacher, you don't know what I've done and where I've been. I know. I understand. I've been there too. I've done all that stuff. I've done a lot of bad things, but thank God I'm like that little baby there. I've got all them brand new fingers and toes. Hey man, I'm brand new. I've got a brand new slate just like he does. I've got a brand new birth certificate. It's all brand new. Hey brother, it's all good from here on out. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I saw a video of my granddaughter the other day. She was praying for me. Ain't that a blessing? They showed a video of Lauren and Tra Travis. Uh, don't know if I'm supposed to tell this or not. They did a video, you know, did a Whatever they call that thing. It's scary, man. If I can look at, she's in there doing like this, praying for me. I'm glad she didn't do something else. It could have been worse. Amen. Amen. That a blessing. Amen. In there praying. She, I guess they told her who her daddy was. She probably saying, oh, God help me. 
Lord, help me when I'm born. I know he was mean, but I'll tell you, brother, thank God. Let me say this, number one. When you get saved, you have a new attitude. Hey, brother, when you get saved, your attitude changes, don't it? Brother, I'll tell you what. I, you can tell when somebody gets saved, their whole attitude, it changes. Man, I, I got to think about that old, old legion. You know, the guy's dwelling among the tombs. He had, uh, he had, uh, among the tombs that live in the graveyard. He had a bad attitude, didn't he? Hey, man, brother, he, he's living out there, and, and he was cutting himself that's how you can tell somebody demon possessed. They're always wanting to do. They're always wanting to have more tattoos and more ear piercing and nose piercing. They want to pierce everything in their body. Hey, brother, that's demonic. That's demonic when you're wanting to hurt yourself. Amen, brother. When you're wanting to hurt yourself, that's of the devil. Hey, I don't like pain. Hey, man, brother. Hey, I, I don't like. I don't like hurting my wife's husband. It hurts me. I don't like it. Hey, brother, that, that ain't right. That's of the devil. And old guy was out there, and he was screaming and crying. He was out there among the tombs, and brother he saw Jesus out there on that boat, and he calmed that storm. And Jesus came up to him, and he went out there and he cried and he screamed, and Jesus began to talk to him, and he cast those demons out. And those demons came out and went into a herd of swine. And that herd of swine went running down the hill and went down into the sea and choked to death. That's where devil ham came from. Amen. Somebody, Amen. somebody said they swam out on the side and started preaching water baptism saved you. Amen. But old Legion was so bad they had him chained up. And he was screaming at night and cutting himself and screaming and wailing and it all chained up and living in a graveyard. But brother, the Bible said when they came out there to see what happened to them hogs, that the Bible said he was clothed. That's the first sign you can tell somebody got saved. He started putting their clothes on. Amen. Amen. He started dressing himself. And he cleaned up and started putting some clothes on. And he was sitting at Jesus' feet. And the Bible said he was clothed and sitting at the feet of Jesus. And in his right mind, he was sitting there. Listen, kids, if you can't submit to your mom and daddy, and you can't submit to a pastor, and you can't submit, amen, to your Sunday school teacher, you got something wrong. You need to submit to God and those that are over you, just like Legion did. He had a change in his attitude. That's the first sign you can tell you're saved. His attitude changed. Oh, Zacchaeus come down out of that tree. And brother, I'll tell you, you know how you tell he got saved? He said, Lord, if I've taken anything by false accusation, I'll restore it fourfold. He started pulling his wallet out. That's how you can tell somebody can get saved. Their whole attitude changed. But he started pulling his checkbook out. Amen. Hey, you don't have to preach on tithing a whole lot. If somebody really gets saved, I ain't never had nobody have to set me down and say, now, Mr. Wilcox, what you need to do is, I never had nobody have to tell me that. My dad never had to set me down and say, now son, you're going to have to start tithing. Never. Never in all these years. First thing I ever did when I got saved, I said, what I need to do? Start carrying your Bible. Start reading the Bible. They shoved the King James Bible under my nose. I said, all right, now what I need to do? Read it. Okay. Now what I need to do? Start witnessing. All right, now what I need to do? Start tithing. Okay, now what I need to do? Go to church. Okay, now what I need to do? I, I just keep on witnessing. Keep praying. Keep going to church. All right, now what I need to do? What are you saying? I'm saying my attitude changed, brother. That's how I know I got saved. It wasn't, I didn't know I saved because I had a tingle all over me. And it wasn't because of a certain way I felt. It's because my attitude changed toward everything in my life. You have an attitude adjustment. Number two, everything's new when you get saved. Secondly, you'll have a new appetite. You'll have an appetite for spiritual things. The Bible said, I have not seen, neither ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him, but God has revealed them unto us, us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. You'll have an appetite for spiritual things. You know how you can tell when somebody really didn't get it? They just don't care for spiritual things. You just can't give them an appetite. You just can't make them, can't make them eat. You know, you can tell when somebody's sick, they won't eat. Hey, brother, you know how I can tell when I'm saved? Stayed hungry all the time. Amen. I like that preacher, brother. Jeff said, he said his little boy ate all the time. So, that's a, so that kid ate all the time. 
I know I raised three boys and a girl. I know about that, brother. We just now got, well, we can afford groceries. Everybody all gone now. <laughs> he said his boy ate so much that he was twins and ate his brother in his mother's womb. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, that's bad, ain't it? Lord, that mercy, that boy could eat. <laughs> ate his own brother for his... <laughs> Lord, have mercy. He said, I declare I believe he ate his brother. <laughs> Praise God. But I'll tell you, brother, when I first got saved, I had an appetite for spiritual thing. I wanted some. I wanted the Word of God, brother. I love gospel singing. I want to hear some of that old-fashioned singing. I want to hear somebody sing that song. Oh, the name of Jesus. Take the name of Jesus with you. Oh, living by faith. I want to hear about amazing grace. I want to hear how beautiful heaven must be. Hey, Amen. I want to hear those songs about the blood. I want to hear those wonderful songs. I want to hear a preacher get up and preach. Open that blessing old King James Bible and right back and start preaching. Amen. My appetite changed, brother. I didn't want Leonard Skinner anymore or Led Zeppelin. I didn't want none of that stuff. Thank God I want some old-fashioned preaching. And brother, all these years has come and gone. After 35 years, I still love it. I still want it. I still love old-fashioned preaching. I still love the Word of God. I still love that blessed old King James Bible. That still does something for me. I was laying across my bed last night at about 1230 at night and I'm still reading it and I'm still loving it and it's still feeling my soul after all these years I'm still I'm an old man and I'll tell you it still feeds me and I still love it that lets me know that I'm saved my appetite changed I fell out of love with the world and I fell in love with Jesus Amen. that's how you know you saved your appetite changes I used to love the things of the world. I used to want to be where there's a party at. If there was loud music and dancing and wild women and smoke and liquor and all, I'm ashamed of that, kids. You all stay away from that junk. Anywhere there's anything like it, I was attracted to it like a bug attracted to a light. Now if I see that or hear it, I steal the other direction. I'll run off a cliff to stay away from it. I ain't kidding. I will run off a cliff into the river to avoid that. If I'm on the side of the road, broke down and have to go get directions and have to go into a tavern, I just about walk 10 miles out of the way to keep from going into a hellhole like that. Amen. Stay away from that junk. That's right. Stay away from that mess. Can't stand it. Can't stand to smell it. Can't stand the sight of it. I can't stand to look at it. I don't want it. My appetite changed. I can't stand to look at those people. I ain't saying I hate them. I still love them. I want to see them get saved. But I can't stand to see them standing around, guzzling on that liquor, turning up a bottle and drinking it, and smoking and drinking and toking on a weed and popping pills and getting drunk and taking a woman into a motel room and all that bunch of junk. It makes me want to puke. My appetite changed. Glory to God. But on the other hand, I can walk in the back door of a church and that's choir can be up singing. Yeah. Man, I can feel it down in my soul. Yeah. I can walk in, I, I can hear them singing like the choir was singing a while ago. God's been good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What is that y'all singing a while ago? That last one. I've been yeah, I've been blessed. Start talking about how good God's been. I've been good, God, God's been good to me and I've been blessed. I've got arms that are raised and feet that'll walk. And I've got food on my table and yeah. shoes on my feet. And I've got good health and strength. Yeah. I've got a job and, and I've got, I got a place to sleep at night. Yeah. I've got a roof when it rains and yeah. I've got a car to drive. My kids are healthy and I ain't dead and in hell. Boy, I can sit there and I, I can feel something stirring down in my soul. Lord of God, I love it, brother. I love it. I just feel like somebody at the steakhouse. Man, I tell you, I feel like I'm just scooting up under. The master's table. Get me a great big old dose. Feel like clear me off a spot, brother. My appetite changed. I used to want to avoid places like this. I used to hate it. Before I got saved, I used to hate it when somebody died. And I had to go to a funeral. Because I knew somebody was going to get up and pin my ears back, boy. I knew somebody was going to get up and lay into me and go to preaching. And I wasn't nothing I could do but sit there. But now, I look forward to it. I go to church, and I'm sitting there thinking, 
Man, I hope somebody lays it on us. We do that, don't we? We'll be going somewhere to go to a meeting. The choir will be going somewhere to sing or our family going to sing. And maybe we don't know who the preacher is. We get invited somewhere and we'll be talking. To one of them. Who's this preacher going to preach? I don't know. Have you heard him? No, I hadn't heard him. One of he's going to preach. I don't know. I heard this and I heard that. Bless God, I hope he rips us apart. I hope he lays into us. I hope there's blood and guts all over the place. Man, I hope he tires our head off, don't we? Amen, brother. And brother, if he don't, we all come back down the road thinking, my goodness, what a disappointment. Man, wasn't that terrible? Man, that was a disappointment. That was two hours of our life we can't get back. I mean, we wasted all this time. Man, we could have been, I wish we'd have been in a good meeting where somebody had got up and broke a sweat and preached to us. That shows your appetite changed. Not only that, but you have new actions. Your actions change. I used to look forward to weekends. I still look forward to weekends. But for a different reason. I used to look forward to carousing around like a nasty old alley cat. Didn't you? Some of y'all, maybe not all of you. Like an old dog. Now I look forward to weekends for a different reason. Saturday's coming up. Getting ready for Sunday. Me and Brother Sam will be talking sometime. He'll say, man, I'm just looking forward to tomorrow. Ain't no telling what might happen. We might have some visions tomorrow. Who knows, the Lord might show up. And it might get on when the choir starts singing. Preacher, you might not even get to preach tomorrow. Sometimes he'll tell me that. Sometimes he'll say, you might even get to preach. We might, it might just get on. We might just have a time. We might just tear the place apart tomorrow. We'll get talking like that. You know what? You have new actions. And it involves going to church. It involves witnessing. It involves a fellowship with the saints. It involves the Bible. It involves other things. New actions. Your actions are different when you get saved. Amen. Amen? The actions of a saved man and the actions of a lost man are completely different. They're opposite. If you come up to the altar and you pray and you cry... Sling a little snot, and you go back out of here, and you still keep doing the same old things you, you did before. All you did was cry and sling a little snot. You didn't get nothing. But if it transforms your life and makes a different person out of you, listen, I ain't just saying it because it sounds good when you're preaching, but y'all wouldn't know me, how, what I used to be like. You wouldn't believe it. My brothers, I seen them a couple weeks ago, and they still act like they don't want to see me. But back before I got saved when I was a teenager, we all got along fine. I was the wild one of the bunch, the youngest. They messed around them old cars all the time. Thirty-some years has gone by, Brother Sam, and they still act like he's a preacher now. My own blood, flesh and blood. I got different actions now. All I want to talk about is going to church. Amen. How I raised these boys and that girl. That's been our life. My whole life's been about church. Amen. Preaching. Amen. Seeing people get saved. When they say, what have you been up to? They know what I'm going to say. They know I ain't going to say what they're going to say. They know what I'm going to say. Well, I'm, I'm up here preaching, so and so. I'm going to be preaching. One of them said, well, what are, you, what are you doing? I'm going to be preaching down here tomorrow. Why don't you come hear me? Oh, you just messed up the whole conversation. You just throwed a monkey wrench in it. Why did you have to say that? I'm going to be preaching right down there. To you, five miles, why don't you come down tomorrow? It's awful. My actions change. Used to, I'd say, we're going to have a party tomorrow night. We're going to roast a pig. You coming? Yeah, man. We'll throw down. But it ain't like it no more. I don't do that junk. We're going separate ways, boys. Amen. We're going separate ways. My actions change. Yours did too if you got saved. You say, preacher, I got saved. That didn't do none of that to me. I ain't talking you out of your salvation, but maybe you better stop and look back and think about it. Amen. It's more than repeating a prayer. It's more than getting a card and signing it and getting your name on the roll and getting up here and getting wet in the baptistry. That, none of that means nothing right. unless something happened in your heart. Amen. I'm telling you about my personal experience about somebody's hooked on something they couldn't get off of. And God got me off of it. New actions. Amen. It's hard to believe. It's hard for the world to believe this. I know the world don't believe it. 
But it's hard to believe it. That a person can be hooked on alcohol and drugs and gambling and all this other stuff. That you can be broken and cry like a baby and broken and pour your heart out. And get down on your knees and just cry and pray for five minutes. And get up. And just miraculously, the next day you wake up and that's all gone. Amen. That's all gone. Amen. And I ain't never done none of that stuff anymore. You explain that. And that that is made crooked be made straight? Tell me that. So I stand up and tell me how you do that. Amen. Tell me how I had the power to do it. Brother Sam, how'd you quit it? How'd you quit coke and drinking and all that? There ain't no other way. Brother Jeff, how'd you do it? There ain't no way you can do it. You ain't got the power to do that, brother, and you ain't either. You ain't got it within you. There's nothing inside of you, Brother Shannon, that can change that. You can't just wake up one day and have some sort of a magical epiphany and say, I'm going to change. It's a new day. You're not Scarlett O'Hara, bless God. Besides, that's a phony baloney movie. Yeah. You can't just wake up one day and change yourself. Brother, I'm talking about a total transformation that happens when a person is born again of the Spirit of God. And Brother God said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I'm glad to tell you that this morning, everything's new when you get saved. I'll tell you, you have new actions. How your actions are new. And if you're still having trouble with all that other stuff, maybe you ain't even saved. Number four, you have new associations. You have new associations. Your relationships are different. You have a new relationship. Best relationship I ever had. You don't realize this before you get saved. The main reason I got saved was to, was to escape hell. And I didn't realize. My mind goes back to Genesis. I think it's 15. I might be wrong on that. But I think it's Genesis 15 where God told Abraham. He said, look out there at the stars. He said, Abraham, he said, I... And thy exceeding great reward. He didn't say all those riches and all these descendants. He said, I am thy exceeding great reward. He said, I'm the best thing that's ever going to happen to you. You don't even know it. Amen. Best relationship, Brother Jeff, that I got out of this deal. I got a good wife, good kids, and a good deacon, good friends, good church. But that ain't the best deal I got out of this. The best relationship I got out of this, I became a son Amen. to a father. That I didn't even know. Amen. I mean, I heard that Jesus loved me all my life. I heard that on my mama's lap as a little boy. Heard my daddy preach it. Heard it in Sunday school. I learned the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves all the little children. I heard all that. And I believed it as a kid. But I never really, really fully realized it and came to a reality in my life until that Sunday night in November, 1978, when I asked God to save me. Then I realized the sonship and the fatherhood of God. It came a reality in my life. Oh, brother, listen. There was a new association that became real to me that night. Amen. All these years coming on. And it's still just as real now as it was then. Amen. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the one knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. He loves us. We have a relationship with Him. We have a new association. I can't, I can't put it into words and I can't make you understand it. I saw people shout and praise the Lord and I saw my mama cry and pray and my daddy would, daddy would always preach. When he preached how Jesus loved sinners, tears would run down his face, drip off on the floor. I always saw that and I thought, well, oh, that's good. And, but that never was real to me until it, until it happened to me. Travis don't know about loving his own kid, but he will in a few months. Amen. It'll come real to him. 
Y'all with me? Yeah. Till it happens to you, you just don't know. Man, when you realize that relationship between you and him, Amen. that's the greatest association. Associations change. When I, I was so dumb, I was like my, most kids when I got saved, I thought, man, when I get saved, I've got all these cool friends. You kids listen to me. When you go to camp, you'll learn this. Friends are not what you think. I thought, man, when I get saved, I got all these cool friends. I had a bad wreck, bad wreck before I got saved. None of my friends came to see me. And I got saved right after that. And I ain't seen none of them since. I bumped into a couple of them since then. And they avoid me like I've got a disease. Because they know I got saved and they know I'm a preacher. And a person that smokes dope and shoots up, the last person they want to talk to is a Baptist preacher. I promise you. Some of them's into witchcraft and demons and stuff like that. Last per they're more scared of me than I am them. I ain't kidding you. You say, preacher, what am I going to say to my friends? You don't have to say nothing to them. Just get you a new batch. Dump them. You don't have to dump them. They'll dump you. It's easy transition. Just start talking about Jesus and carrying a Bible. It happens like that. It's like a dog shedding its fur. Amen? Amen? You have a new relationship with the Lord. And you have a new relationship with other people. And I'll tell you somebody else you'll have a new relationship with. You have a new relationship with the devil. Yeah. You'll find out you and him ain't partners anymore. Amen. The devil used to didn't bother me at all. But I've been at it with him ever since. Me and him, you sat on the same stool together. He'd tell me how many to drink, how many I could afford, how many bags of pot to buy. But now, Lord in mercy, he gets me trouble all the time. Does he you? See, me and him is going the same direction he used to. Now we're going opposites. And I'll give you this last of all. You have not only new associations when you get saved, but you have a new aim. You have a new aim. You have a new aim on earth. Your aim on earth is to do the will of the Lord. You set your affection on things on in heaven, not on things on this earth, but you want to do things that please Him. But your aim will be, you'll have aim on things on the earth and you'll have your aim on things in heaven. It's not like you're setting... Like you're working your way to heaven, but that you know that's going to be your ultimate goal. And you know that's where you're going to end up, and you want to try to take somebody with you. You follow me? When you get saved, you know that all this is just temporary. You're just passing through. The Bible said those pilgrims over there, they received not the promise, but they set, this ain't the exact words, but they set their sights on a, a new city whose builder and maker is God. And they knew that they're setting their sight on a, a city which hath foundations. And they knew they're just passing through. This, this country's not theirs. We get aggravated and we get, we get tore up sometimes about our country and the world and the shape this world is in. We have to remind ourselves that we're born again Bible believers. We have a new aim. Our aim is not here. This is the dressing room. We're just passing through here. Heading for the big stage. You know what? There's a place. There's a place being constructed right now. Just for us. This world. Not this world politics. And all this mess going around the world. It ain't for them. They ain't going to be nowhere around. It's going to be for born again Bible believing Christians. Only. Members only. It's being constructed for us. All we got to do is just maintain our position. Hold the fort. Keep fighting. Keep working. Occupy. He said, Occupy till I come. That word occupy don't mean just sit down. It's where the word occupation comes from. Just keep working. Keep doing what we can do. We can't win the world of Jesus, but we can win some. Can't do everything, but you can do something. Amen. I can't do everything, but what I can do, I will do. Amen. And what I will do, I'll do the best I can. Right? We can't win the whole county to Jesus, but we can win the ones we can win. 
We can hold our spot right here on this corner in Hazelhurst. That's one spot the devil ain't got. If we didn't hold this spot, there might be a nightclub here. Who knows? And if this spot was turned over to the devil, then another spot might be turned over. No telling, this whole county might go down the tubes. And then another church might give up. Another church, but you never know. So our aim is to hold on and hold out and stay with the stuff and strengthen the things which remain. That's our aim. Amen. Philippians 3.20 said, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. Philippians 3.20 and 21. That's our aim. Our conversation is in heaven. He's our mediator. Our job's to stay right here and do our best till he comes. Let's stand this morning.